Hello and welcome to day 12 of the 365 day pottery challenge. I'm Steve and today we're going to finish up putting a handle on this pitcher that we made yesterday. I'm also going to do a little bit of trimming on here and then I'm going to show you two different ways to make a handle and then I'll attach one of them to the pot. So it's going to be a big day. Before I get too far, I'm just going to cover this back up with plastic because it's really a nice leather hard right now and if it gets any drier, I'm going to have problems. So the first thing I want to show you is how to make a rolled handle, like a hand-built handle. And then I'm going to show you how to pull a handle. So this wad of clay is going to be a hand-built handle. And a lot of times you'd want to do this on a canvas board. This is kind of a porous piece of wood, so it'll work okay for my outdoor purposes. But we're just rolling it. A trick with the canvas is to wet it a little bit with a sponge if you have a thicker canvas because it will suck too much water out and it will dry your your uh, wood or your, your clay. In fact, I might just do a little bit of moisture. Hopefully I, this doesn't backfire on me. You can't have it wet either. Just a little bit damp. I can even dry it with a towel. So let's just see how it goes. But otherwise, if you've ever rolled a coil and you've got cracking in the coil, that's why. It's because whatever surface you're using is just too wet. So we're gonna roll this guy out. I have I actually have way too much clay, so let's see here. We'll just cut some off the end. But what I'm doing is I'm rolling it so that it has a bit of a taper to it. Pull this into the sun so you can see. So you can see it's narrow here and then it gets wider toward this end. And I'll probably cut it about here and then do a little more shaping to it. And there are a lot of ways that you can modify this um, and I'll just show you one. So we're going to take this and we're just going to cut this there. Save that clay for later. Okay. Something like that. I had to go grab a piece of wood. This is just a really random piece of wood, but if you look on this edge, it has a pretty even edge right here. It's a little rounded. Here's a sharp edge that we could use too, but I'm going to use this to modify the piece here. Let me just pull this so it's more in the sunshine. Okay. So what we do first is we, we're going to use the flat edge to kind of flatten this and put some some uh, cleaner lines into it. So I'm going to take the flat edge of this, I'm going to hold it up against it, and I'm just going to gently press it down onto the clay. And if I turn this a little so you can see it, see that's created a flat edge there. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and I'm just going to tip it toward me, same thing until I create a little ridge down the middle. And again, if I turn this so you get the shadow on it, you can probably see that better. So that kind of sharpens it up a little bit. Now I'm going to take this other edge and I'm going to press it into the ridge or maybe a couple of other places to put some ridges in it to give it a little character. So you just hold that right along the ridge and you just press gently and evenly right on the corner and then gently lift it off. So you can see that's put a ridge in there. And you can use a sharper edge too, which uh, this is, is this clean enough? I think it's clean enough. Usually I use a, use a softer edge. Well here's kind of a medium sharp edge. You can play with this is the point I'm getting at to get the desired effect. Let's try a sharp edge just for fun. And I'll just do light pressure with that because that's going to have a quite an effect. And I'll do some light pressure right here. And 
and I'm going to do one right in the middle too, just for fun. Okay. I missed a spot right there. Let me get a little deeper. Just so it's consistent. Okay. Something like that. Now what we can do is we're going to take the needle tool and you can see there's probably there's a little bit of, of unevenness along the edges. Now you can either use this as a straight edge, you make sure you have a straight edge like that, or you can just freehand, but what we're going to do is cut off the excess there. So I like to just set that up and then use it as a guide and just slice off any excess and then you can run a finger down it to smooth it and then you have kind of a clean sharp edge I'm going to flip this around and do the same thing on the other side it's good to work in the direction that you're comfortable with don't try and cut backwards it makes it difficult line that edge up where I want it and slice away Oh, I took too much on that one. It's okay, we'll smooth it up. And it'll work. Now, as I'm working, this is already starting to dry a little bit, which is okay. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Because I overcut it on that side, I'm going to even it up on this side. So it's symmetrical. There we go. Okay, so this is already starting to dry, so I can already start to smooth it a little bit without having to worry about mashing it. But you do have to be gentle. This is gentle pressure. I'm going to take a little off the end here, probably about, you don't want to get too much, a little bit like that. And then I can even gently turn it over and smooth these edges here. You really don't want those to be sharp. And if you have a towel or a foam piece to set this on while you're doing this, that's better. So you don't mash the back. But I was being gentle, so it worked out okay. All right. So now this would be ready to attach onto the vase. And my favorite way to do this is to let it dry to leather hard before attaching it. And I might also, so you can either cut the end of this at, a, at an angle so that your, your uh, handle comes up and off the pot like that. Or you can do this where you pat the end of it to thicken it up. So it'll kind of mush in like a nice thick mush onto your pot. And that kind of distorts it a little bit and kind of gives it some character as well. So I'll just pat that really good. And then we'll leave that for a minute to dry to, or to harden and it's not going to take much. And in the meantime, I'll show you how to pull a handle. We can get rid of this. We can even take this guy, because it's pretty, the breeze is out, out here is really working. So we can take this guy and form it into the shape that we're going to want ultimately, which is going to be about like that. All right. Make sure everything's lined up. There we go. We'll just let that roll. Now we're going to take this piece, if you need to wedge it, wedge it. This is a fresh piece of clay straight from the factory. And I'm going to pat it into a wedge like this. And then I'm going to get my water, 
dip my hands and I'm just going to start gently sliding my hands down the clay. And so you're using a lot of water and you're kind of increasing the pressure as you get toward the end. So it's gentle pressure at the top, a little, a little heavier pressure at the end. And I'm just trying to continue this taper. You can rotate it. But notice I have a big chunk of clay here so I have a handle to hold on to. I have something to hold on to while I'm pulling my handle. And this takes practice. It takes a, getting a feel for it. I've never milked a cow, but I'm assuming that takes practice too. So, And it's good to have a space, either a big bucket to work over or a sink or something because I'm just going to make a mess, right? I'll try and stand sideways so you can see better. But you see I'm kind of creating an oval with my hands like this. And then you can kind of rotate back and forth. And you do a few pulls and then just grab a little more water. And for a mug, you'd, you'd make about this much and just pull that. But we're doing a pitcher, so that's a bigger amount. By the way, if this is your first time ever doing a handle, don't try it on a pitcher. <laughs> try a mug first. Okay, you see how it's coming shape, come to shape? Now I can also take my, let me come around this way, take my thumb and I can start to put a little imprint in there to give it some real shape, some real character. If you get a bulb on the end that's too, that's thicker than the taper, just clip it off like that. So you can keep that tapering out. Okay, alright, we're getting there. Now there are a couple of things you can do. You can fully pull this, lay it out, and you can form it like that. And, and let that dry a little bit to leather hard and stick it on a leather pot. And I'll show you how to do that. Or you can cut it now, stick it on the pot. It's better if the pot is on the wet side of leather hard because if it's too dry, then it doesn't stick very well and you get cracks. But you can stick it right on the pot and you can pull it right off the pot. Um, I'm debating on which one I should do. I don't usually pull them off the pot because I just don't love it. It's harder, although some some people say it's quicker and easier. I feel like I see people lose a lot of pots that way because they don't get the dryness part right. Um, so what I'm going to do is just set this here. I'll just kind of show you the process anyway. And then again, we're going to want this this handle to come up off the vase like this. So you cut an angle back like this. And then we can kind of let that sit for a minute. I'm going to leave out a little piece of clay in case I need an anchor. And we'll just ditch that. We get a little cleaner here. Alright, now I'm going to move these a little bit and I'm going to move this wheel a little bit. Make sure it's still stable. That's okay. I'm going to come around here and I'm going to take this off. Let's see, it's always good to check these. If they dry too fast, that's doing all right. That one's going. Oh darn! I just dinged it. There you go. If they dry too fast, then they won't go on right. But this is pretty leather hard at this point, so I want these points of contact to be leather hard. What I'm going to do now is take a little bit of the weight off of this guy. So we're going to recenter it first. You can do trim these upside down too, but where this has a heavy bottom, it's actually going to kind of stand up pretty well on its own. And I'm going to let it. So I'm going to do the same thing we do to recenter. Make our marks. So it's right here. So we need to scooch it away from us a little bit. 
this guy's pretty well stuck to the bat, so could probably just get away with not even anchoring it. We'll see. Okay, that's almost perfect, but I'm gonna really oh too much. <laughs> I'm gonna really try and get it perfect. And I'm just gonna carve these lines out anyway, so. Oh, that's nice. Okay, that's really nice. Alright, just to be safe and to not freak anybody out at home, I'll anchor it a little bit down here. But not too much. Just, just a little bit. So nobody has a heart attack. And it's got those that nice little foot that I made with the foot trimming tool with the end of this. Right there. And uh, you can kind of customize those just with sanding or carving with a knife. Um, but then we're just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna take some of the weight off of this guy. I'm probably gonna put a weight line here too, so it kind of has a distinct rim. In fact, I think I'll do that first, probably using this guy. We'll find in the right place so you can see this happen. Yeah. Alright, it might be a little too dry for that guy, so I'll probably just dive right into this. We can start with this end. And I'm just going to move down and take off weight. I'll go right here, you can probably see that the best. Switch tools to an easier tool for this, there we go. If it gets all tied up, you gotta undo it. I was getting kind of aggressive there. I'm just going to blend this in here for now so I don't get in the way of all of my rib or my supports. And then we'll come back up. So I'm going to start back up here. I'm going to put this line in again. You can do kind of like this too, right? You, you can do uh, like banding, where you put lines in like this. The sky is the limit. It really just depends on how you want it to look. Right, see that? That's kind of fun. But for this guy, we are just going to take all of that out. A pitcher is something that you really want to be lightweight for for the hand, for the weight of it in your hand. get too crazy. I might be getting too crazy. Hopefully not. It is possible to trim things so much that they become paper thin and then they're just fragile. The fine line between light and strong, light and delicate, and fragile.
Okay, something like that. Just gonna smooth this. that a nice transition. Now I'm just smoothing. And right when you're using the big surface, be gentle, use light pressure, have a light touch on your tool and you'll reduce the chances that you get sucked in or that you catch the pot and toss it somewhere. check your progress is lift up the bat and see how it feels. Make sure your bat goes back on there solidly. I'm going to take these off now and I'm just going to do a little off the bottom here. Well actually you know what, before I get crazy Take just a hair more down here, and then I'll blend it in. Check your handles, make sure they're not getting too dry. This one will take a bit to dry, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, we'll do a little bit off this bottom here. And we'll just be super careful. Oh, I got a little bit of chattering in there. That's actually nice if that's what you're trying to do. It's not necessarily what I was trying to do. In which case, if you didn't want it, you should go back and smooth it. It's a little better. Okay, let's do a little more off here, and then I've got to get those handles on there because this is going to get too dry. Doing very light pressure, just using the suction of the wet clay against the wheel to my in my favor. Something like that. Okay. Very 
pretty good. It's always good to cook while you're ahead too. Of course, I'm not good at taking my own advice. So let me show you a little bit how to do this upside down. Recenter. Just going to do it this way because it's easy. The tricky part about doing a vase or a pitcher upside down is that it has that little bit of a taper on the on the rim. Well, this will be okay. We'll be gentle. Pretty good. Okay. I'm just going to take a little weight out of here. Make it lighter. You can kind of support the pot too, just to make sure it doesn't go flying. I could take this whole foot off, but I kind of like it. So I think I'm going to leave it. It does need a little smoothing though, so I'm just going to come in like this with a sponge. Just smooth it. Hi, Biggie. Okay, we're going to quit while we're ahead. Although I also encourage taking it so far that it dies. <laughs> but that's maybe not for an instructional video. Okay. Okay, better put my name in it and walk away. This time I'm going to use the end of that. It's kind of sharp, but it's blunt on the end, but sharp on the side. That works. There we go. Okay, much better. Okay, I'm going to grab some slip, and slip is just mud, it's basically mud that's left over from your pots. And I'm going to shift back around over here, I think. Now we can take a look at our two pieces. This one has started to stiffen up a bit, it's still fairly wet, 
and this guy is basically leather hard. This is a good time to do a little more smoothing if you want because it's harder to do once it's on the pot. It's going to be kind of delicate. Notice how I'm cradling it really gently. You don't want to do any bending of this. Same with that one. No bending until you form it into the exact shape that you want and then you leave it that shape. Because the bending weakens it, causes it to crack. Okay. I'm liking that. I think I'm going to go with this one. But I'll kind of give you a you know, I'll show you how to do this too. Why not? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the spot straight across from our spout, which is right here. And if you if your pot is a little dry, you can actually rehydrate it by taking some nice goopy slip and you can put it in that spot. It doesn't have to be that thick. <laughs> it's a lot. And you can put it in this spot too, where you're going to put the bottom. And just, I'm, I usually am pretty liberal about it. I don't mind. I would like it to be very hydrated. So now the moisture from that slip is soaking into the pot. This pot's not bad. It's, it's leather hard. It's nice. But I'm trying to show you all the tips and tricks. Because bases are tricky, right? You need all the, all the skills you can get. Let me get my towel here. Okay. So while that's drying, you can be messing with this, or while that's soaking in, it's not too bad. You may be able to see it's drying a little bit where it was thin, which is about what I would expect. It's good to make sure you got the right spot. I might have gone too far left on that. Yep. Okay, so that's good checking. Okay. I'm going to let that chill for just a second, and then we're going to take this guy. I'm going to put them both on. I'm going to put the, the pulled one on, and then I'm going to cut it off. Just to show you. I'm going to score this guy. And I'm actually going to put some slip on here. Because it's starting to get a little dry. And you, don't, you want it to be wet. And then quickly I'm going to score this guy. Now, if your slip has dried, you'll want to scrape it off. That wind is drying everything really fast. So just to, for demonstration purposes, I'll show you how we scrape that off. Scrape that off. Right, even though it's pretty wet. Now I'm going to score this. You want that score to be about the size of that. I go a little bigger. Some people go a little smaller. I like to make sure that my handle is going to stick. I will also check your spout. So i got to move it over a tiny bit. I like it bigger because I want the, everything. So these are like the teeth. It's like the Velcro. You're sticking together. And then I'm going to score it down here as well. About like that. You don't have to score the bottom of that. And then, we're going to take some fresh slip again. Put that on there. Don't be shy. This is your glue. That slip is going to glue this together. Okay. Then I'm going to set that down. Clean my hands. Dry my hands. Pick this guy up. I'm going to cradle it in my arm so that it's supported. And I'm going to bring it to the pot. Is that a good spot? Or should I come over here? Probably over here. And I'll try to not to block the sun. I'm going to bring it in like that and I'm going to press it in. This is a little tacky now, so it's I can kind of have it get a grip on it. Now I'm going to gently squeeze it and push it into the pot. Sliding down the whole length so I'm not pinching it or distorting it anywhere. Support that. And I'm just pressing it in, kind of all around. Try and keep that straight, as straight as possible. Okay, now, whoops, that's not the water. 
Okay, now we're going to pick this guy up and tip it backward. There we go. Okay. I'm going to come around here one more time. And while I'm cradling the pot like this, I'm going to take a little water and I'm going to push this up tight into the pot again to make sure it's really good and stuck. And then I'm going to do a little bit more pulling. Just a little bit of water. Pulling like this. All the water's dripping off my hand. There we go. Okay, and then you're going to look at it from the end like that. Gonna line it up. And then you're going to do kind of a last pull. And you're going to flip it all the way down to there. I'm probably off camera now, aren't I? Let me, let me show that again. In the camera. Pull, flip, stick. And then you look at it from the end to make sure that it's lined up. And if you want more handle or less handle, that's not bad, but I could have gone, you know, with more handle. If you want more of a swoopy handle, go get a little higher. Check the end, make sure it's lined up. And then I can press this piece in. You can pinch it off like this if you want. To get rid of that. This is a good time to put a stamp right there. I'm gonna make sure I'm holding it here. Put a stamp right in there. Or you can just press it in with your thumb like this. How, whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to make sure it's lined up straight on the end like this. And then I'm going to turn it over. Clean dry hands. Because see how, uh oh, we're losing it. Oh, I'm losing it. Too much time having it sit there pulling. I'm gonna have to just make sure I smear that in really good there. There we go. What I was gonna say is you're gonna turn it upside down like this, and then you're going to check that curve and make it a nice, elegant ear shape. You could press on the bottom a little bit just to get it right at the shape that you want it. And then you're going to leave it like that and let it dry like that. Okay? Now we're going to do this handle. Hopefully, it's not getting too dry. So, what I'm going to do is actually cut this guy off. And that's easy. You just take a wire, a needle, make sure it's clean and slice it off. The reason I'm doing this is so that if you're at home and you're thinking, well, I can't do a handle, guess what? You can practice. Make yourself a mediocre mug that you won't worry about and then make a bunch of handles and put them on there. And one funny little tip is that so if this is too dry, which we saw it, it might be, right? But when you put a handle on there, a bunch of moisture soaks in there. And actually gets it to start, dry, start hydrating so that when you go to put this guy on, it's going to fit better. I'm going to cut a little bit off right here. Just to make sure I have a nice fresh piece of clay to stick. Okay. And I'm going to score this guy. It's always good to take a deep breath. Handles are stressful. They're so stressful. But if you get the routine down right, then they're not so bad. And the really key is leather hard and leather hard. That's why I don't like attaching the pulled handles as much, because you're putting a wet handle on a leather hard pot. And as things shrink, that handle is going to shrink further as it dries, because it hasn't dried at all. 
and it tends to want to crack and pop off there. That's just my thing though. Cut a little off of there too. Okay, that's scored. Now on this one I'm going to score this. I'm also going to line this up to see where we're going to land. So right about there and there. So you can put a little mark where you're going to be. There we go. And then you'll go score that up. So on this one I do score everything because when you're attaching leather hard pieces you want lots of scoring and lots of slipping. Make sure you're on target again. Okay. And then we're going to get one last fresh dollop of slip. Get it on there. One for down here. And you know slip is just leftover mud from your clay, right? But you want to make sure it's the same clay. If you have a low fire here and a high fire here, you don't want to put low fire slip on a high fire pot. Words to live by. Okay, now we're going to take this. Again, we're going to line it up. We're going to set it right where it needs to be. And now this one's pretty leather hard, so it's even easier to push. And I like to do a little push and wiggle. Push and wiggle. That really works those little Velcro teeth together to make it stick. Check your alignment. Make sure you're on target. That's the biggest thing. It's so easy to forget that. And then same down here. Press it in. If you need to, I can't get my hand in there. But if you need to, with a mug, you can reach in and support it. It's pretty solid down there, but same thing. If you can push and wiggle a little bit to really work that in there. As much pressure as you can do without damaging your pot, which is a fine line to walk for sure. And just like that. Okay, let's do a tour. Hopefully I can get a little closer to the wheel or to the camera. You can see now you're gonna want to go here and you know straighten all this up, make sure it's lined up with your spout, right? And then you can kind of work on your curve a little bit if you need to lift up a little there, push down a little there. Whatever you need to do to get that beautiful, and we'll, we'll refine that a little more later. But then before this stuff all dries too much, oh darn, I keep using my slip. I like to use a brush, a paintbrush, a really soft paintbrush. I don't have one with me. But I do have this nice soft sponge. And what I'm going to do is just go around these edges, wipe off all the slip. If you have some score marks that you need to just smear in like that, just rub those in. See how easy that is to clean up, especially if you do it kind of right away. Not too much water, just damp. There we go. Come over here. Wipe away that slip. Careful not to bump your handle. Here, I'll switch hands so you can see better, hopefully. Yeah, this is where I would really like to have a just a tiny little soft brush that you can just get in there and brush with. It's so it's so nice. Okay, now I can do a little refining. Get my shapes right. Yeah. There we go. It's looking pretty good. You can always come in with a tool too. Like if you need a little bit of kind of cleaning up in there, you kind of use the side of the needle tool. It's like a mini scraper. You can get into these really tight spaces with it. 
and then just boop with a sponge. Okay, last thing you do again is set it down. Check your alignment with the spout. Of course you can check the, the feel of it. That's pretty nice, pretty nice. Now, before this gets too dry, I'm going to cover this right up immediately. And I'm also going to put it on a plastic bat. If you put it on a wood bat, water will get absorbed. Moisture will get absorbed out of the clay and it'll dry faster. And right now I do not want this to dry fast. I got some water in there. Hold on. Doesn't really matter, but I'm going to shake it all up. And maybe even flip the bag inside out so it's dry. Okay, now cover it up good. Set it on your bat. Maybe even tuck this under gently. You could put this upside down too. That handle's stiff enough that it doesn't matter, but if you have a softer handle, you'd want to flip it upside down so the handle will sag in the right direction. So it will sag in, instead of sag, this is your ear shape, right? Instead of sagging this way and looking sad, it'll sag upside down so it will get more of a delicate and pronounced ear curve, ear shape. So, um, Anyway, the reason I'm covering this is because of that same thing with the, the body of the pot and the mug. You want the dryness to be as exact to each other as you can. Can't emphasize how important that is. And so if I made any errors, if the handle was too dry or if the pot was too dry, by covering it, I'm allowing it time for that moisture to equalize it's in a contained environment. There's only this one amount of, there's only one humidity in that bag. And so if there's more moisture in the pot, it's gonna move to the handle. It's gonna equalize without drying any further, okay? And then they'll be equal. And then when I take the bag off, and usually I'll take it off bit by bit, I'll just open the bag and leave it on the pot and let it dry slowly, over a week even. I usually leave it wrapped like this for at least a few days. If you've got a week though, that's great. And then slowly dry it. Give it as much time as you can. And then the handle and the pot are going to dry at the same speed. And you won't get any cracking. That's the real secret. Among all of the other juggling and <laughs> breath holding to get it done. Um, but that's how you do a mug. No, it's not. That's how you do a handle on your teapot. So let's take, and I'll give you one last look at what we did. Yeah, very nice. 